God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Among D. Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. For prayer or information concerning our ministry, please email me at abundant.grace at att.net. Our message title today is Satan's Fiery Darts or His Fiery Arrows. I will be reading from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Beloved brethren, Satan is the number one enemy of every Christian. He has multiple ways of attacking a believer. He is relentless in his attacks and knows exactly when and where to attack you for maximum damage. Paul tells us that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but against powers of evil. Therefore, one cannot win a battle with Satan and his demons by using physical weapons. Only supernatural weapons will bring victory. In our verse today, we see that Satan is attacking something specifically in a believer's life. They are flaming missiles or fiery darts and are dangerous in the hands of Satan. He has a target, and that target is your faith. In warfare, a dart would be lit so that when it hits its target, the fire would spread and destroy, therefore a flaming dart. A dart is something external from without. Satan orchestrates circumstances to attack your faith, my beloved. A dart suggests speed. Satan attacks suddenly, without warning. He shoots his arrows at you during those times when you least expect it, at times when you are most vulnerable or most victorious. Why does he target your faith? Faith pleases God. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Satan doesn't want you to please God in any way. It is your faith that overcomes circumstances and brings victory. Satan wants you to be defeated. It is our faith that brings answer to prayer. Satan doesn't want you to pray and get answers from God. No. Faith brings hope. Satan wants you to be discouraged. Faith invites God into your situation. Satan doesn't want God involved at all. That's why he attacks your faith. Faith here is practical. It speaks of your dependence upon God. Faith is standing on God's word, believing that he will do what he said he would do. I'm going to give you eight of Satan's favorite darts. One, a dart is designed to plant doubt in your mind about God, such as, if God is so good, why does something so bad happen to you? God isn't really listening to your prayers. Can you really believe what God said in a book written thousands of years ago? Why do those who don't serve God seem to be happier and better off? My beloved, Satan wants you to doubt God's word. Satan will also throw darts at you about your salvation, attempting to get you to doubt that you have been saved, although you have done everything in the Bible that relates to being saved. Satan will put doubts in your mind about other people suggesting you can't trust him or she isn't what she seems. Two, there is the dart of discouragement. This is one of Satan's most used darts because it is so effective. Discouragement is when you lose God's perspective. The devil orchestrates circumstances to discourage you. With this dart, Satan is attempting to get you to take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. He tries to get you to get your eyes on people instead, circumstances, and things in general. And why? Because people will disappoint you. Circumstances will discourage you. Things will fail you. This start most often is designed to attack the emotional areas of your life, to get anger, fear, and worry to replace joy, peace, and love. You can become bitter, truly. This is at the top of Satan's list of tools to use. Maybe it's his most favorite. 3. The Dart of Deception One of Satan's games is Deceiver. He is the master deceiver. That is his nature. He makes things appear one way when they aren't that way at all. Satan attempts to deceive people about the Word of God, hitting at their beliefs. And why? Paul tells us, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. My beloved, God's word builds your faith. Something Satan knows is destructive to him. Jesus warned us that many would come supposedly claiming to be him will have a word from him. The deception dart makes things look worse than what they are and that affects your attitude. This dart also makes things look better than they are. That's temptation. It makes bad things look good. Wrong things look right. Good things look bad and dangerous things look safe. 4. The dart of desire. The devil attempts to get you to desire that which cannot be fulfilled and be in the will of God. He primarily does that in three ways. John tells us in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16, which reads, For all that 
is in the world. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It's my beloved. This gives us tremendous insight into how Satan operates to get you to desire something that is outside of the will of God. World refers to that anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-things of God's system. He uses the flesh, that part of you still desiring to do wrong. The lust of the flesh refers to Satan appealing to the physical part of you, doing things with your body that will dishonor God. The lust of the eyes refers to Satan attempting to affect your thought life. What you see affects your thought life. The pride of life refers to doing things your way instead of God's way. The dart of delay, number five. The devil attempts to get you to desire that which cannot be fulfilled and be in the will of God. He primarily does that in three ways. As we read in 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, this is tremendous insight into how Satan operates to get you to desire something that is outside the will of God. The word world refers to that anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-things of God's system. He uses the flesh, that part of you still desiring to do wrong. The lust of the flesh, refers to Satan appealing to the physical part of you, doing things with your body that will dishonor God. The lust of the eyes refers to Satan attempting to affect your thought life. What you see affects your thought life. The pride of life refers to doing things your way instead of God's way. Six, the dart of distraction. If Satan cannot get you through a direct attack, he will attack someone whose defeat will tempt you to get your eyes off of Jesus. That person's defeat has the potential of defeating you. He will send distractions, problems, people issues, work problems, money challenges, and all kinds of circumstances to get your eyes off of Jesus. He wants you to change your focus from up to around. While you are distracted, here comes a dart right at your faith. Number seven, the dart of destruction. The devil by his very nature is a destroyer. He is out to destroy those who pose a threat to him. Faith poses a threat to him, and that is a sure thing. John 10 and 10 reads, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Remember this, my beloved, this dart is flaming, destroying everything it hits. These darts of destruction are aimed at your marriage, your home, your children, your testimony, your attitude, your body, your mind, your emotions, your spirit, your character, and of course, your morals. Eight, the dart of denial. Denial is pretending it is not so when it is so. Denial is failure to admit the truth and accept reality. It fails to take responsibility. It's failure to admit when you are wrong or blaming someone else. Denial's favorite four words are, it's not my fault, or three words. I don't know. My beloved, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, Paul talks about a shield. The shield is like a door. When the flaming darts hit it, they will stop the darts and extinguish them. How does it work? Let me give you four things. You have faith in God's presence when it looks like he's not there. You have faith, believe in God's word, even when it looks like circumstances have the last word. You have faith that God is, even when it looks like he isn't. You have faith by standing on God's word, even when the winds of doubt, floods of discouragement, and the lightning of tough times and bad news come suddenly upon you. Remember what happened to Job. Read the book of Job, and you'll get insight as to what I'm speaking of here today. So, my beloved, I pray that this audio message touched you today. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for the message. Thank you for giving us instruction on how to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. Thank you, Father God, for leading us and guiding us into the truth of your word and letting us know that you are there for us. We don't need to doubt. We don't need to be discouraged. We don't need to be fooled by Satan. We don't need to desire things that are against your word. We don't need to delay and what we have to do for you. And we don't need to be distracted by circumstances around us. And never forget that we will never be destroyed. And that we never have to deny who we are through your son Jesus Christ. Thank you Father God. We praise you and we thank you for being with us standing with us, and protecting us. And we give you praise, honor, and glory today as we pray in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, in whose precious name we pray, amen. My beloved, go out, put on the full armor, stand firm on your faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God bless you, and go with God.